put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Born Legacy movie review. Following the ending of Ultimatum, which I'm going to have to be giving away here because otherwise this entire movie doesn't make sense and if you haven't watched Ultimatum or the, the first three movies, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what you're doing watching this movie. So yeah. The whistle has been blown, as it were, and the CIA are now trying their darndest to yeah, they're, they're, they're making like a Catholic priest having been caught with an altar boy. They are trying to cover it up. And basically that means killing people that works for them. And that know stuff that they don't want to, you know, if, if there are no people to question, if there is no physical evidence left, then there is no case. And, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I mean, once it gets to it. Which I think might be like halfway through the movie. I, I guess the first part is supposed to be like us getting to know the new protagonist, Aaron Cross. I'm just not sure I really feel like we got to know him that well, and if it's not that, then I frankly have no idea what it took them so long. I, I, I wish it didn't take so long for the movie to get to showing that Tony Gilroy has a pretty decent handle on the Bourne-ish action sequences, because once it gets to them, he fares rather well. But yeah, it takes about half the movie to get to, you know, these great scenes of Edward Norton spinning all the way around himself, barking orders that you just barely think you understand, at a room of CIA technicians who are tracking their every move and doing all sorts of cool stuff that seems like it could probably work in real life and scenes of a born-ish agent hiding from the CIA. I've said born-ish twice already, and this is only the start of the video. This movie really doesn't try to hide at all that it's basically an offshoot from the Born trilogy. And as such, it has a heck of a Legacy, I know, that was horrible, to live up to. And it really doesn't. I'm, I'm terribly sorry to break the news, but, well, break the deal. I'm not sure I'm really the first person to say I haven't looked at other reviews yet particularly, but yeah. <sighs> not many other reviews. Anyway, it's... You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the positives first. I already brought up the action. When there is action, it's really good. There's very little of it, but the the final half hour of this movie is a really cool, very intense climax. I kind of wish I hadn't already seen th that part of the movie in Terminator 2, but it was still... I. 
fully grand. It was really exhilarating. Even as I was sitting there thinking, this is Terminator 2 all over again, you know, my, my pulse was through the roof. So, there's that. One really great thing, I mean, as per usual, we have shootouts, chases, and martial arts sequences. This one, unlike Supremacy and Ultimatum, in the martial arts sequences, you can tell what's going on. I appreciate what Greengrass was going for, and he sure succeeded, I just personally don't... I'm, I'm not fond of that style, of this sort of... It's almost happening to us as much as, you know, more than we are witnessing it. We're not seeing people have a fight, we are in the fight with them. And we don't completely perceive everything that goes on. We can just tell people are getting hit. You know, in this... Yeah, there's, there, you know... I'm not sure there's any shaky cam, there certainly isn't much of it, if so. And you can always tell, I was never unclear on in a fight scene, who has just hit who, where did they hit them there, why did they hit them there, yeah, all, the, all this stuff, and that works really well. I missed that. And the... other than the action, in spite of there not being very much action, this is a tense film. I will definitely admit that. It it keeps your attention throughout and it keeps you at, your, at the edge of your seat pretty well throughout. Now, the... that does bring me to the length. This is a bit on the long side for a Bourne movie. The others were pretty much an hour and 45 minutes. Excuse me. This one is half an hour, excuse me, half an hour longer than that. Two hours and 15 minutes. That is a long time for not having that much action and considering that if the plot had been trimmed or just made more understandable, it really wouldn't have had to be that long. I'm drifting into the negative. Okay, I'll do a few more positives and then I'll go full force into the negative. Jeremy Renner is a quite compelling born-ish agent. Unlike Matt Damon, there are a lot of great qualities to the Matt Damon, you know, portrayal of Jason Bourne. I love his portrayal of Jason Bourne, but he is a little bit pretty for someone who's been, you know, a killer, been through this really tough training and, you know, experienced some brutal things. Jeremy Renner, he just has that intensity. I don't even know if he can turn it off. I've never seen him turn it off. When he is on screen, when you see those eyes, you can just tell this guy has gone through an awful lot. And he has seen and experienced brutal things. And he is ready. And I'm, I'm not sure I was certain of it before this movie, but now having seen it, he can pull off the heightened intelligence as well. You believe that he he has the powers of observation and the extremely quick thinking of a born-ish agent. Now, he also, him and Rachel Weiss have better chemistry. Still not quite sure I'd say it's like great chemistry, but it's better than that of Matt Damon and Franco Potente. Now, that might more or less cover the, the positives. So, having brought up Matt Damon versus Jeremy Renner, Matt Damon's presence is sorely missed here. 
it, it really, the movie loses a lot for not having him, yeah, it, he, he really brought something to those three movies. Yeah, there, there were times where I literally thought to myself, as, as I was sitting in the theater, again, like I said, at the edge of my seat, I still, there was that twinge of, man, I wish I could see Jason Bourne right now. Man, I wish I could see Matt Damon right now. Yeah. Now, that... Now, yes, the... The plot. I swear, I hadn't read read much of anything on, uh, about Legacy when I recorded the video review for Ultimatum. So when I said that apparently they had run out of plot to tell, I swear I wasn't setting up this line, but honestly, evidently they hadn't run out of plot. Tony Gilroy, or whoever, was just recharging, and... I don't know, I mean, maybe it's because it's been longer since the last one, you know, you, so far there's been a three year gap, now it's been a five year gap, so there was just, there was so much plot, and they just loaded it all onto this one movie, and it's just, I don't know, maybe they were trying to overpower us with plot instead of action, and not a good idea. It, yeah, there's, there's much more than there needs to be, and it's certainly needlessly complicated. And then there is all the... all the stuff it gets into that I really wish it didn't. One of the keystones of the Born trilogy, of the actual Born movies, is the realism, is the way it's grounded in reality. You could see you haven't met Jason Bourne, well, in a way of speaking, you don't know him in real life, is what I mean. But you believe that he's out there, you believe that there, there are agents like that working for the CIA and the like out there. I don't think you're going to feel the same way about Iron Cross. I certainly don't. I, I do not believe that this, it, I don't know, it's almost bordering on, like, conspiracy theory th stuff. Yeah, I... It's getting dangerously close to being sci-fi at points. That it's, it's mentioned in the trailer, so I'm not really spoiling anything, but there's just, there's this kind of science-y... It's actually, it's, it's kind of funny, Rachel Weisz, like, several times says science, like, it's it's very defined and very and not broad at all. She said, I'm, I'm a woman of science. I did science for... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, they, they have this science stuff relating to his character and in general the new agent program. It's not Treadstone anymore. And... Yeah, they just... The... the some of it is believable enough, but s s some of the places they go with it, I frankly don't believe. And, and then some of it just seems like it was written... Yeah. Basically, there's, there's a sort of... There's an artificial ticking clock, and I feel like it was purely made purely written into the movie because they had location scouted, they had seen... I suppose I shouldn't say it. But yeah, they had seen a place and they thought, man, it would be great to shoot our climax there. And so they have to figure out a way to get the protagonist there. And so they did. And it just... It feels utterly unnecessary. Th that and he needs busy work. Because the, the overall plot is really not getting progressed. This is more like, it's, it seems like it's trying to be the start of a new trilogy. Which I think is a horrible idea. Maybe if this didn't have a connection to the Bourne series, 
yeah, then then maybe it would be okay. If, if they had just said, you know, we're trying to do Born again, but this is a new series, this has nothing to do with... It, it has no direct connection to Born, but instead, this half-hearted trying to tie it in with the Born trilogy, it left me fairly disappointed. I, I don't think I would be disappointed if this hadn't had if this hadn't pretended to have a connection to the Bourne series, because really, the plot isn't particularly forwarded. I mean, by the... Yeah, nothing particularly happens in this movie that didn't happen at the end of Ultimatum. So, you know, that that's also... If, if you're, like, considering... If you really wanted to see the ending of Ultimatum followed up on, that doesn't really happen here. Now, other parts where the realism didn't quite... Yeah, I already mentioned the Terminator 2 stuff. That's in the climax and in one other scene. Then we have... Also in the video review for Ultimatum. I said that they pushed it to the limit. They couldn't really take it further as far as action goes, without going into the unbelievable, the, the unrealistic. And again, I swear I didn't know that this that that's what they did here, but yeah, they, they pushed it further, and yes, it goes into the unbelievable. I'm not saying they're not good action scenes, I'm not saying they're not exciting, but what I am saying is, we can tell that they're staged. There are several points where this breaks into just generic mainstream action flip territory. And that's basically fine, and I'm... It's not a bad generic action flick kind of... You know, what, what they do, but... That is what it is. It's not born anymore. It's not believable. It's not... Yeah, it, it just doesn't have that special quality to it. The... Actually, I, had, I did have a few more positives now that I think about it. Aaron Cross, we feel like... I, I certainly feel like he isn't always completely in control of situations. That happened more and more with Jason Bourne as the you know, sequels progressed, he got to feel more and more like he was almost psychic, or perfectly planned out everything. Aaron does certainly plan, and we can tell that he, you know, has an idea of how things should go, according to his, but it also feels like he sometimes improvises, like he suddenly finds himself in a situation that he really wasn't planning for. And he has to improvise, and yeah, that's interesting. He's also more vulnerable than Jason Bourne ever got, even in Ultimatum. This one does play somewhat like a new uh, identity, you know, I mean, yeah, from the trailers you can probably get, this really isn't a spoiler, Aaron Cross and the Rachel Weisz character, who I cannot remember the name of, end up, you know, going together. They, they need each other. And, yeah, we have this top-trained CIA hired killer protecting this young woman who is not all that familiar with this world and is not prepared for it and yeah so that they we have that same dynamic you know the only thing that's really missing there is the amnesia i suppose that more or less covers it there are definitely some good qualities to this movie the action is really good there's just very little of it it's well acted, pretty much through and through, you know, you've got 
don't know his name, but the guy that built Fox River from Prison Break is there. Really good. Edward Norton. Not sure Norton was quite bringing his A-game, but he was fine. I, it's Edward Norton. It's like, you know, pizza or sex. Even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. I... Characters feel like, you know, there's, there's that la layer of professionalism, so when someone is supposed to be working for the CIA or something, you believe that they're working for the CIA. You know, they actually are, they come across as being level-headed and having this kind of understanding of things and, and being ready. Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.